So can you move to the next slide? Uh, so I'm going to talk about the Prism time series mode. Uh, what's kind of unique about this mode is in addition to the spectrum, which is shown on the bottom, there's also simultaneous short wavelength photometry and the light is spread out. It's defocused and you can kind of see this in, uh, in the middle plot. It looks kind of like the primary mirror. And uh, this we'll see this becomes uh, can be pretty useful um, to have with your long wavelength grism. Next slide, please. So the first thing uh, we looked at was the uh, detector settling time scale. So this is something we saw a lot with the, the Hubble wide field camera three that there was this hook effect, um, but it's it's pretty small on, on Jade Web uh, it's detectors uh, for the long wavelength on the right. It's basically we only have upper limits. Basically, instantaneously settles, and you don't have to allow wait times. On the left, the short wavelength time series does have a little bit of a hook effect. This is uh, of our ten near cam detectors. This one has the most uh, charge traps in it. So. Um, this does have a, 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 a hook effect, but it's uh, got a settling time scale of 11 minutes or sh roughly about 11 minutes or shorter um, and uh, amplitude 700 parts per million. So um, the good news is that it settles down pretty qu pretty quickly and can be fairly well modeled with an exponential. Next slide, please. And the good news is the performance of the Grism Time Series mode is just excellent. You'll see all the, the web instruments. We're very, very happy with how they work for time series. On the left uh, is the, the photometry uh, from the weak lens uh, aperture sum. And uh, the theoretical error was 107 parts per million. On, and then on short time scales, the scatter is 130 parts per million. So we're very happy with that. And then on the right is the long wavelength Grism. And um, the scatter was also uh, was, was the same at, at, at the pixel resolution, um, the theoretical limit and, and the measured error are the same. So overall, happy with with these modes. So that's uh, we're very pleased and you should be excited about the observations you can get. Next slide, please. Now, there was something strange we did see in in the time series. Um, so this is it was a jump right in the middle of transit. This was a Grism time series in the middle and the short wavelength time series on the right. It also showed a, a, a smaller um, jump. If you look at the, the fine guidance sensor data, it also showed a jump. And uh, but that's a different star, different instrument. So we were puzzling about this, what this is. We, we noticed that there was a high gain antenna move roughly around this time, but then we looked at it's not at the same time. The high gain antenna move uh, settles out very nicely in, in a minute, so it's not um, not a big problem for the time series. But this jump had us puzzled. The next slide shows the uh, spectrum of the jump, so it's wavelength dependent. Uh, the shorter, in this case, the shorter wavelengths um, had a larger jump, jump than the long wavelengths. So next slide. Uh, we were suggested by several folks to, to look at the short wavelength time series. And so it's getting on a plane to support commissioning from Baltimore and it's getting it's looking just before the plane took off and then saw this, this big signal. I was like, I know it is, but I can't say until, until I lay it because uh, we just, just found it. So the left is the um, weak lens plus eight time, um, point spread function. So that's a that hexagonal shape that kind of re resembles the primary mirror. And then the, these images along the bottom are the uh, ratio image from that reference image and, the, and, and, and later integrations. And then you can see that right at the location of, of the jump, at the time of the jump, there's this, this change in the point spread function. So what this is, is a, a primary segment, a mirror change. So next slide, please. So uh, we worked with Alden Gerling, who was able to do a uh, re recover for every integration what the state of the primary mirror was with the, the optical path differences. So this is um, only possible right now with the, the Grism time series mode, um, but and and you know we and we worked with the wavelength team, so it's not something we we can do necessarily right away uh, for all science observations, but it gave us a clue about what's what the primary mirror is doing. And you can see that there, there are these tilt events. So uh, one of the hexagonal primary mirror segments does a, a quick, in this case, and then and the ones we observe here is very fast, less than one and a half seconds, um, the mirror has a, has a tilt. And then we actually uh, uncovered 
A second tilt event during this time series that caused a, a smaller jump. So uh, next slide, please. With the GRISM time series mode, uh, though we have like a natural wavefront sensor that's running, the, the, uh, but we can sense it in other ways as well. So this is what Nikolai Nikolov did looking at the full width half maximum. Um, and you can see that there's a jump in the full width half maximum during the tilt event. Um, so this is something you could sense with with uh, different instruments, you know, near spec, MIRI, uh, and, you know, nearest sauce has a, a also something analogous to the to weak lens, a uh, different kind of lens. So uh, you can sense it there with full with have maximum. Uh, on the bottom is the fine guidance sensor. You can also sense it with the difference images. So this is a dot product uh, across the tilt event. You can sense the other one with, with a different reference image. So um, there are other ways of sensing them, even if you can't uh, get a full like phase retrieval of, of the primary mirror. So they can be pretty well modeled with a step function uh, in, in the light curve. Next slide, please. So here's what we know about the tilt so far. Uh, we're not 100% sure of the exact cause, but the hypothesis that's, uh, that we're going with right now is a relaxation of micro stresses. So uh, these are thought to be built up, you know, as the mirror cooled from its warm state to its cold state now. Uh, and release these these micro stresses. It's been taking longer to decay than than the telescope team originally thought. But uh, if you look at in April and May, what the the, the wavefront team found that there were a frequency of, of three per day. So that would, you know, that was uh, a pretty high rate. You know, we'd get an average of one per um, time series observation. But uh, more recently in June, the frequency of tilt events was less than than once per week. So that's a good sign. Hopefully these will go away and you won't have any, but it's something to look out for, especially for earlier observations. Um, and they can happen in different flavors. Like there's sometimes there's a, a wing or multiple segments that, that change at once. And then uh, you'll see in a few uh, slides later, nearest found a more gradual change on longer time scale. So uh, these are, are things to look out for in your data. Next slide, please. Now, moving on to the throughput performance of the GRISM time series. Uh, the good news is that uh, the performance, the, the, we get more photons than the exposure time calculator predicted, especially at the, long, at the longer wavelengths. So um, it's like 90 to 160 uh, percent larger than exposure time calculations. So that's good news for your signal and noise. The next slide is the flip side of that, which is you know increased chance of saturation. Um, the left plot shows what happens at the sh at the shorter filter F three two two W two, and um, it just so happens exposure time calculator predicts the worst case of that the pixel that the light is perfectly centered on the middle of a pixel, uh, but but the real the measured one uh, kind of sa saves the day a little bit that. Uh, it's not not perfectly centered on, on a pixel. So it should be okay and pretty safe with that filter. On the long wavelength filter, um, the, the peak rates are, are indeed higher than the exposure time calculator, and that's where you want to be a little more careful. Fortunately, the exposure time calculator has a built-in buffer. The saturation warning happens at 70% well depth, so that somewhat uh, covers, but uh, if you're very you know worried about nonlinear effects or saturation, you're really pushing it, it um, you may want to consider reducing a number of groups to, to you know about 30% less um, than than the uh, ETC warning about saturation. Next slide, please. The other the good news is that when you bin in uh, in time, the precision uh, improves. So you can average together across time. This is an Allen variance plot. So the x-axis is the bin size, y-axis is the noise. And once correcting for the jump and exponential ramp at the beginning for the short wavelength, um, this, it scales down very nicely to, down to the 20 parts per million level. We can measure for HAT B14. Next slide, please. Uh, when you when you average across wavelengths, it does not go like the one or one over square root of n. Uh, this the large part of this is due to one over f naught. So you can see how the the data is. Um, scaling a little bit up from what, what the ideal 1 over square root of n law would predict. Next slide, please. So this is something we knew about uh, going in. Uh, there's a paper 
a couple papers on this, uh, one over F noise and their correlations across the fast read direction. So this is a noise source that, that makes these stripes, these banding structures across the fast read direction, which is shown on the left for, for real data. On the right would be ideal white noise where every pixel is independent. Um, so this is something that you need to, to be aware of that, that there can be correlations across the wavelengths from the one over F noise. Last slide, please. So the, uh, this shows the transmission spectrum uh, that Thomas Beebe found for the long wavelength Grison time series, and it is flat as, as predicted. Um, so the, there is some excess noise. The theoretical expectation was 55 parts per million, uh, and the measured about, uh, scatter was 91 parts per million. Um, but uh, looks looks flat as we we're expecting. The precision is is good, and and we found some consistency between the short wavelength photometry and grism spectroscopy. Uh, 